A Better Way to Study and Treat Cancers This video describes the steps in the flow of information within cells and how a cancer-causing mutation progresses through these steps to ultimately help form a cancer. We then describe how different types of cancer drugs target different steps in the progression of a cancer-causing mutation. Finally, we introduce oncomorpholinos, the best precision-targeted drugs which enable faster, cheaper, and more precise identification, study, and blocking of a wide range of therapeutic targets in human cancers. We believe custom cocktails of these oncomorpholinos hold great promise for annihilating any patient's cancer without harming the patient. Information Flow in Cells In the nuclei of our cells, double-stranded DNA stores genetic information that specifies the structures needed to carry out processes required for our bodies to function. When specific portions of that genetic information are needed for cell function, short segments of the DNA are copied to produce single-stranded RNA transcripts. These RNA transcripts carry that specific genetic information to where it is needed in the cell. Non-coding RNAs serve directly to control elements that assure proper functioning of other cell components. Messenger RNAs are copied from DNA to give pre-messenger RNAs, which are then modified and typically segments are selectively cut out to generate multiple different species, or isoforms, from the same initial RNA transcript. These modified RNA transcripts, mature messenger RNAs, are then exported from the cell nucleus to the cytosol of the cell. Proteins are made in the cytosol of the cell, where each messenger RNA is read by a ribosome to produce a specific protein. The thousands of different proteins so produced then carry out most of the body's functions. Many of those proteins function within the cell, others are positioned on the cell surface, and a few are exported from the cell. Targetable Structures in Cancers Most cancers begin with one or more mutations in the DNA of a cell followed over a period of years to decades by additional random mutations that together may lead to one or a few malignant cancers. A mutation in the DNA generally affects cell function by being copied into a mutant RNA transcript. That may be a mutant non-coding transcript that performs a mutated control function in the cell. Alternatively, it might be a mutant coding transcript which is transported to the cytosol of the cell where its information is read by the ribosome to generate a mutant protein with an altered function, or lack of function. The mutant protein can remain within the cell, be positioned on the cell surface, or be exported out of the cell. In principle, drugs could be designed to target any of these mutant structures in cancer cells. However, until the 1990s, the available technology was inadequate for specifically targeting a selected mutant structure within living cells. Targeting Cancers – Older Treatments Prior to about the 1990s, cancer therapies were not really targeted in the precise sense we now use that term. Back then, cancer therapies generally entailed attempts to completely remove the cancer by surgery or destroy it with a focused beam of hard radiation. For cancers which had not yet begun to spread, such treatments offered a reasonable success rate. However, after a cancer had begun to spread, the only option was chemotherapy. In the early days, such treatments were brutal for the patients and cure rates were quite low, mainly because the early chemotherapeutics were primarily selected for their ability to damage the replicating DNA characteristic of fast-dividing cells. The difficulty with such treatments, many of which are still used today, is that fast-dividing cells include both the fast-dividing cancer cells and fast-dividing normal cell types that are essential to the patient, such as cells of the immune system and cells lining the intestinal tract. Also, cancer cells in hypoxic or low-oxygen areas are dividing slowly or not at all, and so are typically not killed by the chemotherapeutics, which are only capable of killing fast-dividing cells. Targeting Cancers Current Treatments since the 1980s, a wide range of new technologies in physics, chemistry, biochemistry, the then new field of molecular biology, and various areas of biology and medicine have come together to make it possible to reliably target specific molecular structures in cells and in patients. Most of these technological advances are currently applied almost exclusively for targeting cancer-related proteins. Targeting a protein with a small molecule drug 
By the 1980s, a number of sophisticated research technologies were becoming widely available to cancer researchers, including protein X-ray crystallography, high-throughput screening, and rational drug design. These technologies now enable the development of small molecule drugs that achieve true targeting of specific proteins unique to certain cancers. A particularly notable success in development of a small molecule drug specific for a particular cancer is the drug imatinib, also known as Gleevec, for treating chronic myelogenous leukemia. That drug was developed in the 1990s by utilizing a number of the newly available research technologies to guide synthesis of multiple prospective drugs, screen many new compounds for promising leads, and then optimize the activity of a lead compound using rational drug design methods. That pioneering targeted drug achieved unprecedented efficacy against its specific targeted cancer in its clinical trials, and Gleevec was approved by the FDA in 2001. While Gleevec is a truly exceptional case, nonetheless, broad application of these constantly improving research technologies is leading to increasing numbers of targeted small molecule drugs with improved specificities and efficacies compared to the earlier chemotherapeutics. Targeting a protein with an antibody drug The other major advance in treating cancers by targeting cancer-related proteins entailed the development of monoclonal antibodies specific for cancer-related proteins positioned on the surface of cancer cells. The earliest such cancer-targeted antibodies typically carried radioisotopes or toxic drugs. Probably the most exciting recent advance in antibody drugs for treating cancers has been the development of immune checkpoint therapies. These are designed to circumvent the defenses that tumors use to shield the cancer from the patient's immune system, thereby allowing the patient's own immune system to destroy the cancer. While such antibody drugs have achieved impressive therapeutic results in some patients, so far immune checkpoint therapies have only proven effective against a modest percent of treated cancers, and they can sometimes cause severe or lethal side reactions in patients by unpredictably turning on the patient's immune system against the patient's own tissues and organs. To summarize, this is what it typically takes to target a cancer-related protein. Many months to several years, a few million dollars, and only about 10% to 15% of the identified cancer-related proteins can be successfully targeted. When the resultant drug is a small molecule, it typically has only modest specificity for its target protein. But when the resultant drug is an antibody, the specificity for its target protein can be quite high. Targeting cancers, future treatments. While targeting proteins has dominated cancer drug development since the 1980s, nonetheless, a quite different set of technologies has been developed which now afford rapid identification of a broad range of cancer-specific RNA transcripts that play key roles in all cancers. To target such RNA transcripts, a class of high-precision drugs called antisense oligos has been developed for precisely targeting selected RNA transcripts. Targeting an RNA transcript with an antisense drug Because of the exquisite simplicity and modular structure of RNA transcripts, akin to the linear arrangement of zeros and ones in computer code, it is generally fast, easy, and cheap to develop an optimized drug targeted against a selected RNA transcript. A class of drugs has been developed to exploit this simplicity and modular structure of RNA transcripts. Such drugs are called antisense oligos because they target the sense RNA transcripts. Such antisense oligos have a simple linear arrangement of the four different genetic letters, A, C, G, and T, linked in an order complementary to the four genetic letters in the targeted RNA transcript, A, C, G, and U. In contrast to the great complexities and high costs of targeting proteins, after a transcript has been selected as a target, it is generally obvious to one skilled in the art just how to design an optimal or near-optimal drug against that transcript. Such an antisense drug can generally be developed in about a month for just a few thousand dollars. The most advanced of these antisense oligos have a novel non-ionic backbone structure, which is key to the special properties required for use as precision research tools and for use as safe, effective, and affordable precision drugs. 
In sharp contrast to the case for targeting a protein, targeting an RNA transcript with an antisense drug is very different. It typically takes only a few weeks. It typically costs only a few thousand dollars. We estimate that at least 30% of the identified cancer-related RNA transcripts can be successfully targeted, and with new targeting approaches now under development, we predict that the percent targetable may soon increase to something in the range of 60% to 90% or more. Of particular importance, when the antisense drug is an advanced non-ionic structural type, specificity for its target is generally higher than for any other drug targeting strategy. The differences between targeting a protein and targeting an RNA transcript are even more apparent in a head-to-head -head qualitative comparison. In a nutshell, relative to targeting a protein, targeting an RNA transcript is typically much faster, far cheaper, substantially more of the identified targets are druggable, and targeting specificity is the highest of all the targeting strategies. In spite of these compelling advantages for targeting an RNA transcript, nearly all current cancer drug development is still focused on targeting cancer-related proteins. So here's a question. Nearly all cancer drugs now in development still target proteins, but RNA transcripts clearly offer compelling advantages as targets for cancer drugs. Why, then, are drug developers still focused almost exclusively on targeting proteins? In vivo delivery for targeting proteins was easy, but before 2017, in vivo delivery for targeting RNA transcripts was toxic and inefficient. A deal killer. As long as a means for safe and efficient in vivo delivery was lacking, all the other compelling advantages for targeting RNA transcripts were of no value to drug developers. Most protein-targeted small molecule drugs are relatively easy to deliver because they're small enough to pass directly through cell membranes. Protein-targeted antibody drugs are also relatively easy to deliver because they target proteins on the cell surface. In those rare cases where they do need to get inside of the cell, they do not need to remain intact during the entry process. In contrast, antisense drugs must get into the cytosol and nuclear compartment of the cell and must remain intact during and long after cell entry. Furthermore, the means by which they gain entry into the cell must not significantly damage the cell. While delivery systems have been available for more than a decade, which do indeed deliver antisense drugs into cells in vivo, those delivery systems available prior to 2017 have been rather inefficient and unduly toxic, so much so that they have been widely judged to be unsuitable for most therapeutic applications. In Vivo Delivery Breakthrough 2015, 2016, and 2017 We have developed a multi-component system for in vivo delivery of non-ionic antisense oligos. It achieves the following steps. 1. Exit from the capillary bed. 2. Efficient endocytosis into cells. 3. Release from acidified vesicles. 4. Binding and blocking function of targeted RNA. In 2015, we devised this delivery system and developed its individual components. In 2016, we assembled the system and obtained evidence for its function. In 2017, we are optimizing this system for safety and efficiency in vivo. Cancer targeting after 2017. Comparing targeting proteins with targeting RNA transcripts. Protein targeting means slow development, but targeting the transcripts offers fast development. Targeting proteins is a high cost, while targeting transcripts is at low cost. Targeting proteins yields only about 10% to 15% druggable targets, but that goes up to at least 30% with targeting RNA transcripts, with new advances potentially bringing that up to 60-90% to druggable. Targeting proteins is low precision with small molecules, high precision with antibodies, but antisense affords very high precision when targeting RNA transcripts. Protein still offers the easy in vivo delivery, but now, so does antisense. Targeting RNA transcripts gives easy in vivo delivery being optimized in 2017. Tools for targeting RNA transcripts. Currently, the four antisense structural types shown in the chart dominate the field of antisense therapeutics, 
Drugs of three of these structural types have been approved for clinical use, 2 prime modified sRNAs, sDNAs, and morpholinos. And drugs of the fourth type, siRNAs, are now in clinical trials. Key Requirements for Targeting RNA Transcripts An antisense oligo, effective for disrupting the function of a targeted RNA transcript in a cancer, should have 1. Long-term stability in blood and cells, 2. A general lack of off-target effects, and 3. High specificity for its targeted RNA transcript. Comparison of Antisense Structural Types the four dominant antisense structural types are compared in regard to properties needed for high-precision and long-duration therapeutic activity. In terms of stability in blood and cells, there is some limited nucleolytic degradation of 2' modified sRNAs, sDNAs, and siRNAs, while morpholinos are not degraded by nucleases. In terms of off-target effects, Interactions of the charged backbones of 2' modified sRNAs, sDNAs, and siRNAs cause protein level effects, while morpholinos, with their uncharged backbone, don't bind strongly to any proteins, but do Watson Crick pair with their RNA target. In terms of sequence specificity, 2' modified sRNAs and siRNAs are moderately specific, sDNA has the least specificity of these oligotypes and morpholinos give the highest specificity of any of these antisense structural types. For technical details, go to the home page and click on the link Antisense Oligos, Structural Basis for Functional Properties. A quick review, and then on to the central challenge in curing cancers. Targeting cancer-related RNA transcripts offers great advantages over targeting cancer-related proteins. Once you have a safe and efficient in vivo delivery system, targeting RNA transcripts becomes by far the best choice. For targeting RNA transcripts, oncomorpholinos provide overwhelming advantages over 2' modified sRNAs, sDNAs, and siRNAs. With these choices made, you're ready to take on the central challenge in curing any cancer, how to kill the cancer without harming the patient. The secret to curing any cancer without harming the patient is to target multiple cancer-essential RNA transcripts which are absent from the patient's normal adult cells, present in the patient's cancer cells, and essential for viability of those cancer cells. Because these special cancer-essential RNA transcripts are absent from the patient's normal cells, they make ideal targets in cancers because they can be thoroughly blocked without risk of harming the patient. What are cancer-essential RNA transcripts? Cancer-specific RNA transcripts. One type of RNA transcripts present in cancers but absent from normal cells are from oncogenic viruses, such as the human papillomavirus types 16 and 18, which are major causes of cervical cancers. Another transcript, present in a cancer but absent from normal cells, is caused by a chromosomal fusion event that results in formation of the BCR-ABL gene. That mutant gene codes for an abnormal protein that causes chronic myelogenous leukemia. Another type of RNA transcript that can be present in cancer cells but absent from the patient's normal adult cells is known as an oncofetal transcript, or fetal isoform. In a developing fetus, Many messenger RNA transcripts are spliced differently than they are in the body of an adult. These fetal isoforms can cause differences in cell growth and function. Around the time of birth, splicing changes begin producing adult isoforms instead of fetal isoforms. Later in life, however, mutations can alter the splicing of adult transcripts so that their fetal isoforms are expressed again. When found in cancer cells, they are called oncofetal transcripts and can promote cancer growth. Identification of Cancer Essential RNA Transcripts The previously described transcripts, present in cancers and absent from normal adult cells, are referred to as cancer-specific. However, typically only a subset of those cancer-specific transcripts are essential for the viability of the cancer. That cancer-essential subset, suitable for productive targeting, is best identified by testing with oncomorpholinos to determine which of the cancer-specific transcripts are truly essential for viability of the cancer cells. 
It is those cancer essential transcripts which can be blocked with safety tested oncomorpholino drugs to kill the cancer without risk of harming the patient. Our immediate goal. In collaboration with the cancer research community, our immediate goal is to develop an arsenal of oncomorpholinos targeted against many different cancer essential transcripts. Ultimately, that arsenal of oncomorpholinos is to serve for assembling custom cocktails, each designed for curing a specific patient's cancer without harming that patient. A technical description of this custom cocktail system is in the open access publication by Jim Summerton in 2016, titled Custom Cocktail for Curing Any Cancer, a strategy for destroying any cancer without harming the patient in the Journal of Drug Discovery, Development, and Delivery. A non-technical description can be viewed by going to the homepage and clicking on the link Cure Any Cancer. Hello, I'm Dr. James Summerton, inventor of Morpholinos. I believe Oncomorpholino antisense drugs, targeted against cancer-essential RNA transcripts and enabled for in vivo delivery, are now poised to revolutionize cancer drug development. I'm betting that such drugs can soon, by about 2020, provide a reliable and affordable custom cure for any patient's cancer without harming the patient.